Earth podcast powered by the Environmental Leadership Forum. Hello everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of the ELF podcast. My name is Anita and I'll be your host for this episode. I have with me Obosuhema Dento. She is a senior student in environmental science as well as a volunteer for the Sustainable Futures Project. If you don't know what the Sustainable Futures Project is, it's a project under the ELF um, program where we go to primary schools to educate them on environmental concepts. Today we'll be discussing what food waste is, the impact it has on the environment, as well as ways to minimize it. Hello, Sima. Hi, Anita. How did I do with the introduction? Oh, it was cool. Is there anything, I liked it. Is there anything you want to add? Anything? Maybe you're a dancer. Ah. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I like dancing. That's and, true. And what? And cooking. And cooking. Yes. So, yeah. And I like food a lot too, yes. Do you waste food? Before I found out about food waste and its impact, yes. So I would say, I'm being honest. I you, used to. <laughs> you used to waste food, but yes. you don't anymore. Yes. Okay, so before I even thought of recording this episode, um, I wasn't really focused on food waste. When, when we talk about waste, my mind goes to plastic waste because we hear news in Ghana about the oceans, the seas, and the water bodies filled with plastics. Yes. And recently, too, I've been seeing articles on how you find microplastics in human tissues, the blood, and all sorts of stuff. Like, yes. all plastic, all plastics. So why food waste? Why is it important to talk about it, especially in Ghana here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's true that plastic waste is like the most popular waste topic in Ghana and even globally. But um, it's important to also focus on food waste because it's actually 60% of the municipal solid waste in Ghana. It makes up 60%. So, I mm. mean, if it's 60%, then... <laughs> I didn't <laughs> think about the this. Then what's this. What about plastic? Yeah, plastics are a lot too, but I'm talking about the municipal solid waste in Ghana. Okay. Yeah, it's 60% is food waste. So that's why it's important. That's why it's important. So imagine if you are able to reduce food waste, then it will really have a positive impact on mm -hmm. waste management in general. Yeah. Preventing food waste through responsible consumption and production can go a long way to solving climate change. I want you to discuss the relationship between um, food waste and the impact on the environment. How are they linked? Yes. So food waste is um, any food that did not enter the consumer's tummy. Mm -hmm. Because um, all the activities from the farmers and through to the food industry, processing to distribution, packaging, Everything was done for the consumer, and so if it doesn't end up within the consumer's tummy, then all those processes are waste. Okay. And you know those processes um, from the farmer's side, there are um, tractors that use fuel mm -hmm. with the transportation, the cars use fuel, mm -hmm. exhaust fumes from their um, exhaust pipe, all of these contribute to the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which also like have an effect on climate and all that. So that is like the direct link from food waste to, I mean, climate change. If you don't take a look at it carefully, you would wonder, is there really a link? But I can say that that's the link. Yes. And another thing to um, that food waste, how it impacts the environment is that because it's um, organic and it decomposes, mm -hmm. mostly they end up in the landfill sites and so they will give off methane. And then when they give off methane, give off methane it also goes into the atmosphere. Methane is also a greenhouse mm -hmm. gas, so it also ends up there. And sometimes it also leaches <laughs> to the ground, they cheese into the ground, like the water table, and then it will affect, I mean, contaminate groundwater and all that. But, you know, farming activities also have a way of contaminating rivers with the fertilizers and all that. So if, after all this, mm -hmm. we end up wasting the food, then, I mean... 
So if I understand what you're saying, a lot of energy goes into producing food. Yes, so and they didn't even talk about the food processing industries <laughs> and the kind of effluents and fumes that you produce. So a lot of energy goes into producing food. Yes. And if you waste it, they end up in the landfill sites where they release methane, which is a very potent greenhouse gas. Yes, that's true. But I'm mm-hmm. also saying that after all this, I mean, the exhaust, the fertilizer leaching into rivers, the um, effluence from the industries and all that. After all this, if you don't end up eating the food or you end up wasting it, that means all those activities are also waste. Understand yes, uh-huh. very well. So we're talking about the supply chain, about how food waste or food loss occurs along the supply, supply chain. chain. Yeah. And on farms, I can attribute it to overproduction. So in Ghana, how can you, how can we help our local farmers um, reduce food loss? What ways can you think of helping our local farmers reduce food loss? Okay, and um, with the, you think you can attribute it to overproduction? Yes. But, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, especially in Ghana and mm-hmm. in developing countries, we actually don't have a problem of overproduction. Um, what is really bothering us is our storage facilities and mm-hmm. uh, the way our trans- our, the transportation, I mean, from the farm to the markets. The bad roads. Yeah, the bad roads and then storage. So most storage facilities, um, on you see in Ghana, like 80% of mm-hmm. farmers still use the traditional ways of farming. Mm-hmm. And... Is the same with how they store the foodstuffs too. Yes, so over the weevils and other pests will destroy like most of the food. If it doesn't get to be transported early or on time because of maybe bad roads and things, then you know most of the food will get spoiled before it even reaches the market. And then when it reaches the market, the transport to the market is a whole new wahala. <laughs> A lot bad road by the time something like tomato by the time it reaches the market, like three should I even say boxes or cartons are spots already, they are mashed, okay. and so consumers don't like that one, and so they end up with okay. When you go to the market to buy your food producer mm-hmm. and stuff, do you always do something like meal planning? Why you say that I'm going to cook this amount of food, so I need this and this um, groceries. I want maybe 10 tomatoes, and I'm going to use this within a period of one week. So when I go there, I wouldn't necessarily have to be demanding for fresh, like you understand, fresh looking vegetables, because maybe you see a mango, which is about to get spoiled, and you see another mango, it's beautifully looking. Which one would you go for? Of course, I'll go for the one that is beautiful. Aesthetics is everything. But for if me, it's pleasing to the eye, I mean, for most people, okay. Yeah, but for there will be exceptions, mm-hmm. I keep. No, it's not all the time. Mm-hmm. But for me, once I know I'm going to use it within a period of like two days, I always like, oh, give me the mango that is almost uh-huh. almost about to get spoiled because I start feeling for them. Yes, I that think. is. You are you know about the responsible consumption. It was this about responsible consumption. I'm feeling pity for the people selling. selling. Like, what will happen to it afterwards? Uh-huh. So you see, you, you are thinking of the sellers mm-hmm. or the traders. Most people are thinking of value for their money. Mm-hmm. So they feel like ah, why would you give me mango that is not looking nice? Sometimes it's not even getting spoiled too, it just doesn't look appealing. Appealing. So they will just not buy it. And in the case of tomatoes, if I go to the market and I see, it's not even spoiled. It's just that because of how it was treated from the storage to, to transportation to the markets, it looks like it's spoiled, like it's mashed and mm-hmm. all that. So I won't buy it. And then the traders to end up having to either throw it away or give it out. Okay. Have you heard about Aquafresh? One Kenya State guy who is um, who produced a storage facility, yes. I call storage with solar panel. What's your yes. thoughts on it? I think it's a very great idea and a very cool initiative to help and and fruit and vegetable sellers. 
in even farmers into fruits and vegetables because he was able to his invention was able to prolong the shelf life for 21 days mm -hmm. and that's a lot of days and within 21 days a lot can happen your fruits or uh, your vegetables can get finished and it will still look fresh still look appealing you know uh -huh. So I think it's a really great And idea. he also links um, the farmers to potential buyers. That is really it. great. One of uh -huh. the problems of farmers is that uh, they find it difficult getting their produce to the market, to the right consumers, uh -huh. especially in Ghana. <laughs> so if, if he's able to link them directly like that, that is really Do you think it's important for hospitality and food service companies to be aware of the quantity of food being wasted? Yes, yes. I think it's very important for um, restaurants, canteens, food joints, even canteens in institutions like maybe the hospital or um, like the ministries to know that they are contributing the most to food waste on the consumer side of the chain. And I was even saying that research, from what I know from the little research I've done because of my project work, um, <laughs> <laughs> because I doubt I'd have done any research of my own in this sector if it wasn't for the project work. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so what I was saying is that from that, um, I realized that in developing countries, um, it, it said that food loss, most of the food waste comes from the production side of the chain. That's um, from the farmers mm -hmm. to the um, factories, food factories and all that. But I feel like now things are changing. Even in developing countries, incomes are increasing. Um, people now prefer going out to eat compared to the traditional way of eating with you. I mean, the whole family now they prefer to go out to eat because it shows some kind of um, self-importance, like shows that you are rich, mm -hmm. shows it's a, it's a flex. <laughs> I mean, eat out, go to all these um, um, popular restaurants and eat cheese just to, you know, document it on your social media. Yeah. So I think it is it is changing now. Even mm -hmm. in the developing countries, the consumer side of the chain is producing more food waste, even compared to the losses on the farm. Yeah. yeah. So I would say that I think more research should be done in that oh, aspect, right. so that that you know those researches are old. Yeah. So I'm saying that the restaurants and those people really need to know the amount of waste they are. And producing because it will even be of benefit to them in terms of monetary value. They do their business for profit. Mm -hmm. And so if they end up wasting most of their food, it means they are losing value and they are losing most of their money too. So I watched a DW report on a Ghanaian chef called Elijah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he told me about, about it. it. And he said, when food goes waste, it's not just the food you have wasted. You've wasted money, storage yes. space, yes. and you've contributed to greenhouse emission. Exactly. And the fact that he's a cook in one of those uh, renowned hotels in Ghana um, makes me happy because yes. he's aware of the impact food yes. waste has on the environment. So when he's done cooking or when there's leftover food, he gathers it and gives it to the vulnerable yes. in the society. So that's one way of tackling food waste. Yes. What is, it's not actually wasted. Maybe you do not regard it because yeah. it's close to the expiry date. Yeah. But people out there do need the food to eat. Yes, that is very true. And another group of people who are really doing well with that is, um, they are called the Chef, Chefs for Change Ghana Foundation. I've not heard about them. Yeah, I, I recently heard about them too. They are really doing great, a great job. In 2013, they actually did a food wastage report Mm -hmm. in Ghana. Yes, they <laughs> took it upon themselves to do that research for Ghana. And the, from their findings, um, they realized that only in 2013, oh, that like some seven, eight years ago, um, they realized that Ghana lost $8.9 billion. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Only in food waste. We are not even talking about the other waste streams, just food. So you can imagine. 
what we are losing now. <laughs> yeah, so it is very important for the hospitality um, sector to know the amount of food they are wasting. And I think one reason why it's difficult for them to realize the value of what they are losing is because in the first place, they don't measure um, the amount of food they even uh, give we to consumers. We, shock, we were doing a, um, th a research for our lecture where we had to go around asking people about the amount of food they purchase and they have no idea. No They're idea. just telling us it's the black basin. They can't yeah. even quantify it. Yes. And, and that's one thing the developed countries have over, an advantage they have over we, the developing countries. Because over there, I mean, the chef knows I'm using 12 kilograms of chicken for maybe chicken soup. They and so, come here, they don't know. Yes, <laughs> and so if I sell the, this chicken soup, I'm supposed to get maybe $80 because I bought my 12 kilograms of chicken for um, $60. So now there's a clear distinction of the profits I'm making from what I am putting into my business mm -hmm. and all that. But in Ghana, it's not like that. If you go to the market, it's just, I mean, um, tin tomatoes, uh, uh, the, the, the tin of the tin tomatoes <laughs> that they used to measure the amount of tomatoes you want to buy. Yes. Yeah. And, I mean, they do it from their head. Maybe if I want to buy two CDs, I'll give you five. Mm -hmm. Five is okay in her in her opinion. Mm -hmm. We don't even have like um, should I say a body? I think we have a body, like maybe the Standards Authority and the FDA, but they they don't have something like a blueprint or a guideline for um all like it's a baseline for all market people or traders I'm or sure food they do sellers in the unions where we have like driver drivers union teachers union and all uh, but well, how come when it comes markets, to the market no, markets women they have their own union they do but then it doesn't uh, show in how they do their things in the market how they sell i'm talking in and um, from this side of how the food is quantified mm -hmm. and how it is priced I think there's a general rule. Yes, there is. But then it doesn't show in quantity. It doesn't show. Yeah. You know, if in Apti, I mean abroad, <laughs> like the, the, 12, yeah, the 12 kilograms going for $60 is because of the guideline that has been put down by maybe the MDO or their standards authority or another board that they've uh, set up to do just that, you see. But okay. here, it's not like that. So it makes it difficult for also the chefs and the canteens to know how much food they are wasting. Okay, so I read that the size of the plate determines the amount of food you waste. Because the plate size is very large, you tend to put a lot of, of food, food on yeah. the plate. So the plate size does matter. And the fridge too. When you see your fridge empty, you are tempted to fill it up with items you do not need. And somebody says, once you put the item in the fridge, it means you don't need it. Just imagine you put plant. My planting is still there since the beginning of the semester. I bought this because I had to buy it. It was cheap at the moment. Yeah, it was cheap at the moment. But I'm not yeah, eating just it. Just to save money. Just to save money. But I'm not eating it. So um, in the end, you've still wasted your money anyway. Yeah, I wasted my money. <laughs> That's true. I wasted my money. And if, I'm just watching the planting like, go bad. Go bad. Yes. And we are not, I don't know why we are not pushed to give it out to when it, it's like mm, that. No, when I give it, I feel like I'm losing. Yes, you feel <laughs> like you're losing. So the size of the place, the size of the fridge, does matter. Yeah. So I think one way they can help the hospitality guys can help reduce food waste is when they portion their meals well, like with the plates, for mm -hmm. instance. If I give um, a smaller plate out and I fill it, to a certain extent. The consumer will feel like he has value for his money because, I mean, the plate is full. Yeah, but he doesn't see that, like, the size has reduced, the, mm -hmm. the size of the plate has reduced. Oh, okay. And the funny thing, too, is that if it was a bigger plate, it was the same amount they would have given you. Yes, I yeah. think I should put that in buffets, like, because it's buffet and I'm paying for, a, I'm paying a limited amount for 
food. A lot of food. A lot of food. Variety. Variety of food. When I go there, I'll just pick, 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 pick. Be hippie. I'll just be saying value for money, value for money, but I'm not eating the food. Yeah. And it's all going yeah, waste. So they can reduce the plate size as yeah. buffet settings. Yeah, maybe have a restriction. You can only, um, according to your money, you can only choose from rice to ache. Jollof is not part. No, no, you can't do that. You can't it's do that. buffet. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? There is always a way when there is a will. So that one. Yeah. So as consumers, how should we position ourselves to minimize food waste? Yes. So, um, as consumers, I was thinking of maybe a restaurant scenario. No, I'm thinking of co- consumers as in as in our hostels. Hostels. Homes. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yes, so um, one way is to just buy the amount of foodstuffs you need for the meal you are going to prepare. For instance, you know um, you, are, you are preparing soup for just today. So when you go to the market, just buy what you need. Don't buy more because maybe it's cheaper and feel like, oh, I'll keep the rest in the fridge and I'll use it another time. But you know that the soup, you just want to eat it today, you just want to take soup today. Mm-hmm. Then the one in the fridge will end up going bad. So I think if you go to the market, just buy what you need. Even if you come back and there's still extra and you keep it in the fridge, always find another meal <laughs> that you would use those food stuff to yeah. prepare. So, and also for instance, if you have leftovers, it's okay to have leftovers, I mean, yes, but you should always eat your leftovers on time. <laughs> before they go bad. Mm-hmm. I know that sometimes when we have leftovers, it's difficult to go back to eat them. You just want a new meal, like a fresh one. It mm-hmm. tastes better and all that. One way you can help with that is to revamp your leftovers. Nowadays on YouTube, there are lots of ways to like make new dishes out of leftovers. Mm-hmm. You can just go to YouTube for inspiration <laughs> and just revamp your leftovers to a nice meal or a nice snack mm-hmm. that you would enjoy. Um, another thing too is that if you have extra food stuffs in your fridge and maybe you went to the market and you bought more forgetting mm-hmm. that you already have maybe tomatoes, when you come back, use the older food stuffs and leave the newer ones. Mm-hmm. so that they have a longer shelf life in the fridge. Don't use the one you just bought from the market and then the one in the, the older one already is getting spots and then it will end up going bad. So that's another mm-hmm. way. And I think another way is, um, especially with your love, I've been oh, thinking baby, about hello. it. <laughs> you know, okay, I don't know for other places, but in Ghana, mm-hmm. How you cook jollof? The leftover jollof. You can it can feed, it can feed like two or three people, and if you are cooking for a large number of people, it can feed like twenty more people because of the kanzu. I don't even know how to explain kanzu. I mean, the burnt parts of the rice. Mm-hmm. Uh, the on you understand kanzu. Yes, they understand kanzu. <laughs> yeah. So another way to help reduce that is I think to use non-stick saucepans to cook your jollof and it's better to cook it on low heat. It will take longer but at least the kanzo will reduce and then people you like their kanzo it's intentional. You know but you know you can't eat all the kanzo. You true. just eat some. Some will always end up in the pain. It's true. No matter how you how much you like kanzo. Yeah. And another thing is that you can always feed your pets with leftovers. That's one thing I think about. You see, out of the country, you watch foreign movies, you mm. give their dogs good looking meals. I know, right? <laughs> Sometimes it's tempting. Yeah. And compared to the Ghanaian setting where we give our dogs the food that we have eaten, the bones and the leftovers. Yeah. Are you sure it's right? <laughs> you, know, you know that I feel like leftovers to their categories. <laughs> I mean, there is leftover that maybe you cooked, you ate, but there was surplus, so you couldn't eat it. So that one, if you give it to the dog, yeah. it's still food. The dogs are suffering. <laughs> it's still food. I mean, you didn't waste it. Mm-hmm. You didn't um, spoil it. It wasn't going bad. But it's still edible. Yeah. So I think that one, you can give it to your pets. And... Yeah, I think composting. composting. You didn't talk about composting. 
you know, um, with composting, I feel like <clears throat> mm-hmm. on the real, it is hard for people, like people who are not, in quotes, passionate about the environment or even interested in taking care of the environment mm-hmm. to do composting. I mean, composting is more of for people who are interested in the environment and want to help or contribute to protecting it. Yeah. And majority of people are not like that compared to those who are. So composting is dicey. But you just do what you can do. Don't focus on what you can't do. Mm-hmm. Focus on what you can do. I think sometimes what prevents us from even um, doing the right things is because you feel like everybody is doing the wrong thing. And so if I do the right thing, it doesn't make any difference. Mm-hmm. When, especially when it comes to waste mm-hmm. management. From segregation to recycling to reusing, you always feel like, ah, Everyone else is, is 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 not segregating their ways. So if I do, if I do, what's the difference? And then you end up not doing it. But little doubts of water make a mighty ocean. So just focus on what you can do. It really does make a difference. Okay, so in Tokyo, researchers have been able to recycle food waste to make edible cement. Have you heard about it before? Wow, no, I haven't. You haven't? That was very interesting. When I read the article, what came to my mind first was gingerbread house, how you can break a portion of it and <laughs> eat. <laughs> so they were able to recycle orange peels, vegetables into edible cement, and they even claim it's stronger than the traditional ones. And wow. They're looking forward to producing it on a large scale. So yeah, people are coming cool. up with new ways. Yes, and I also heard of uh-huh. um, people who, I think they're even Ghanaians. I don't really know who they are, but um, they processed cassava peels, plantain peels into charcoal. Charcoal? Yep. Uh-huh. And so it, it's char, you can use it to cook. Uh-huh. And it's also helping you um, stop cutting cheese for... Yeah. And you know in Ghana, most people still use charcoal. So if we are able to do that on a large scale, it will really help reduce the, the, amount, yeah, of the amount of cheese you cut and then the amount the of waste. waste. Yeah. But you know with the pills and coal, they are unavoidable waste. I mean, we can't eat the pills, cassava pills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are unavoidable waste. Yes, and um, but the ones that are, are edible, but we still waste are uh, avoidable ways. Like you can avoid it yet, it still ended up being waste. Okay, so my last question: What are your thoughts on social media influencers, especially TikTok stars and YouTubers <laughs> using um, food for their content? So you see somebody getting a large bowl of cereal, wasting it, and then seeing somebody make. Should I say Jason Durell? Like uh, make, I know, right? Make cake, uh, make things that you can't eat just for content. What are your thoughts on it? Hmm, that is a very interesting question. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that with content creators, they don't necessarily have to waste their food. It's okay if they want to, like, cook a lot of food just for the content. But I think that also in their video they should add to the content that it's okay to also package the food and give it out to someone it will even make your content nicer Mm. and also you know there are also um people who go to restaurants to try their food and then you see the leftover as if she just took two spoons and then didn't eat the rest Mm -hmm. and then you know they i watched one she even went to the extent of and um, putting used tissue in the sauce because she f- she thought that um, they could re- give the sauce to another person who comes to buy food. Oh, that thing when people get food and they see say, a strand of hair in the food, they actually put extra salt or they mess the food up to see if they'll bring the same thing back to them. People are doing it. Hey, mm-hmm. But the one I watched, she intentionally spoiled the food <laughs> so that she felt that if she left the sauce I, as it was, they could serve someone else with hair sauce, like her leftover sauce. That's what she thought. That was maybe amazing. maybe she was thinking there's something wrong with it, and she didn't want any other person to suffer the well, consequences. Well, no matter what she was thinking, mm-hmm. I felt like that was really wrong mm-hmm. because 
okay, well, you. So I was going to say that for um, um, something like that, you could just call the waiter and say, oh, can my food be packaged? And then they'll package it for you. And you will show it in the video to you. It's still part of your content creation. And then indirectly, you are passing along the message that if you go to the restaurant and you can't finish your plates, it's not bad to suggest that your food be packaged for you so that you send it away. You can eat it another time. That's the whole thing about this food waste. Somewhere, some parts of the world, more food is being produced. Other parts of the world, people are hungry, so it's the uneven distribution of the food. Exactly. And I feel like if um, um, food waste is reduced, it will really go a long way to reduce the number of people in the hunger bracket. No, um, zero hunger. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. To contribute to that SDG goal. No, SD go. <laughs> Sustainable <laughs> development go. <laughs> like SDG SF- go. You know, I wish I for SFP. Uh-huh. SF- Sustainable so, Futures Projects. But you say SFP projects. projects. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And I also think that um, with the content creators, sometimes I think that they waste a lot of food too because they feel like it shows they are rich or it's flex. If you go to the comment section and people will be like, there are so many people hungry in Africa and you're wasting food. And they'll be like, but she has the money. It's yeah. her own money. Yeah, I love like, her to use it. Yeah, it's like, it's cool. I mean, in quotation marks, but Charlie, it's not cool to waste. Yeah. The rich people will tell you, they became rich because they were good, at, they were good managers. Mm-hmm. So it's better to manage what you have and make it better than to waste it, thinking that wasting issues that you are cool or you are rich. Okay. Yeah. So do you have anything to say to finalize the whole show? Yeah, I was, mm, I was going to say that food waste is um, a sector that we should really focus on. Mm-hmm. A lot of advocacy, a lot of partnership with already existing NGOs who are also really interested in food waste. Make it um, more, create more awareness and all that. I mean, plastic already has the awareness. I think because it's non-degradable and it really affects our environment. But I should but add, if food waste were to be a country, it would have been the third largest emitter of greenhouse gas. Wow. That's, that's what I found out. So, so it's a very know, serious Yeah, it's sector. very serious. And it will also go a long way in re- reducing the waste wahala in most <laughs> developing countries. Mm-hmm. Sorry, yeah, especially Ghana. I mean, I think um, you know the waste management issue contributes to floods, diseases. Mm-hmm. I mean, cholera. No, I don't hear of cholera. Again. It's because COVID came and we were asked to wash our hands, mm-hmm. eat in the mm-hmm. house. They we were. Doing personal hygiene, that's why. Because every robust. year there's always a cholera yeah, epidemic. But now, because of COVID, it has reduced. So I think we can keep it that way, even as COVID is passing away <laughs> gradually. Yeah. So thank you very much, Anita, for having me. I enjoyed our session, it was very cool. Interesting. Okay. Do you want to give any shout outs to anybody? Oh, yeah. Um, shout out to ELF uh, for giving us the, giving me the opportunity and um, helping me find a way to contribute to the environment. And shout out to Irama, oh. my friends, and all my friends, Kate and Lily, my girls. Yeah. Shout out to them. Thank you. And happy birthday to Edwin. Yeah! Happy birthday to Edwin. I don't know when they're going to release this episode, but I hope it's be very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and please do not forget to follow us on all our social media platforms at ELF, just type environmental leadership forum when you see us there. Thank you and bye. 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 <laughs> 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 <laughs>